I gotta not say good morning. Fuck. <laughs> everyone and welcome to this episode eight of knit about it our little podcast here on the youtube um i am cassie and this is drew that's true. hi everybody happy sunday <laughs> happy <laughs> happy sunday oh wait um, saturday wait it's saturday saturday oh this is saturday be sunday. when we recorded it but yeah, yeah. it's whatever day it, night. it is in your world <laughs> sunday morning <laughs> On the other side of the world, it's a whole other day. We're on different coasts. What what time is it? What year is it? Who knows? Uh, Where am I? I don't know. We're in that weird, no no time makes sense part of yeah. I think like Christmas to MLK, like we can feel feel comfortable kind of being like in that space. <laughs> yes, I agree with that. So, how have you been? Good. Um, I had a pretty good Christmas. Traveled to New York to visit some family. I did get sick, um, as I shared on social media. I had the flu, and I'm telling you guys, it was kind of nasty, and it's holding on. So if I sound a little bit congested, it is because I am congested still, like two weeks later. But I'm generally good. I had a good week uh, back at work this past week. It was a short week. Um, but it felt really productive. So all in all, pretty good. How are you? About the same, although I didn't get sick, which is nice, but we're still in full. I, I didn't get a break at work this year for Christmas, but I was gone for two weeks before Christmas on our trip. We went to Europe and did all of the crazy Christmas in Europe things, but I'm still in recovery from that in a whole different way. Like I still have packing cubes that are not unpacked. The Rucko. luggage is up. The luggage is up. <laughs> you know that's that's something I've got going on. But the packing cubes, they need to all the formal wear and the other stuff I don't normally wear on a day to day basis just got left in the packing cubes because it wasn't important. Listen, I'm pretty sure that I have a bag in my bedroom from our trip to uh, Olympic. In September, that's like 85% unpacked, and there's probably like snacks and some oh. like water bottles and things like that, like still inside that bag. I found a Stroop okay. waffle in my backpack yesterday yeah. while I was looking for something. I was like, oh, I was looking for my sunglasses, <laughs> but I found a Stroop waffle. But that'll it's be never nice bad. later. It's good. It's a good thing to forget about, you know? It's still good. It's packaged. It's fine. It's like um, those um, those people who tell you to, I, I don't know if you guys have ever heard this, but Mike told me this one year. I guess his parents used to always tuck a secret 20 in their pockets, in, their, in the pockets of their winter coats when they pack them away in the spring. So that way when you take the coat out and then you forget about it and you take the coat out and you wear it for the first time and you reach in your pocket, you find a 20. Hmm. So. Just a little I idea. I don't know about the planned. <laughs> the planned twenty seems a little. I don't know. I, I would remember kind of it, and I'd be thinking I probably about would it. I'd be like, I gotta go I'd get my like, money oh, I need for yarn. <laughs> exactly. So. so, did you have any holiday acquisitions? Any new yarns or bags or anything into your life that you bought? Somebody bought you. Yes. Well, I guess two things um, I can mention. One is, and I don't have it to show, unfortunately, because I'm going to return it for a different color. <laughs> but I do want to mention it, which is I got a really cool tote bag um, from Mike. So he purchased it at Fiberspace, of course. Um, and I had not really seen this bag before. It's really pretty. I'm going to describe it and then you guys should Google it. Um, but it's from a brand called Artifact. Um, and this is an independent maker, I think out of Nebraska and the bags are like kind of a, uh, nice, like, it's like that, um, it's not oiled canvas, but it's like a good sturdy kind of canvas, but not too thick with like, um, leather straps, like nice leather strap, kind of like tote bag situation. Um, Mike waited a little too long, so they sold out of the color that I, I'm really excited about, which is olive green. 
um, mm-hmm. like a solid mm-hmm. olive green one. Uh, and he got me one that's a little bit more like uh, it has stripes and stuff on it. It's a little more it's like a little too beachy for me. Um, but I've got one on special order. So I got that. And the other thing that I acquired and I will talk more about whoop, about this as I like drop it in a moment is I acquired some lucky tweed yarn from fiber space um, to make a sweater, but we'll talk more about that in a moment. So I didn't actually get a ton of fiber space or I'm sorry, fiber related stuff uh, for Christmas. But what about you? Well, I'm still drinking out of my Christmas mug. Um, (laughs) While we're on the subject, I bought my own Christmas present this year while I was in Amsterdam. I love that. I love it. So the first thing I got was the little orange tulips bag from Stephen and Penelope. So cute. I mean, this is just like the perfect little project bag size. Also, like, how can you look at that color and not smile? That's like the cheeriest color I've ever seen in my life. (laughs) And I love green, but orange is also a very deep love. Very deep love for a very long time. No, I get it. And then I bought yarn. Of course, as one does when one Uh, goes to Stephen and Penelope. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I walked around that store for a really long time, just taking it all in. This place is the tiniest little postage stamp of a store like whatever they do online for their pictures makes it look big it's like a a shimmy sideways (laughs) kind of store like you go in and the stairs there's three steps down to get into the shop from the front door and they're like this big little tiny stairs and they're only like this wide like only half of your foot fits on it it's just like this little dinky (laughs) but it's (laughs) So freaking charming. So charming. And everybody that works there was just lovely. There were like five staff members working and I was the only only person in the shop. And so I was very <laughs> well attended to. <laughs> but nice. I got these five skeins of Life in the Long Grass. Ooh, I and love that is, color. This is a pretty good color representation. It's like a scummy walnutty I don't know how you'd explain it's very bronzy gold but it's I would call it bronze yeah and I just love it I love it and it just it shifts with the light it's um just DK it's their DK twist and I don't even know what the color is I'm not even going to say it out loud but oh focus that there you go Remise, remise, remise. Um, But that's what I bought myself for Christmas. And that's... And my trip. Our trip was our Christmas gift (laughs) to each other. So. Awesome. Yeah. I think that was it. I think that was all I got. Yeah. I kept it pretty, pretty reasonable. We had so much luggage. We overpacked, of course, because you don't know what to expect. Like, I live in California, and I'm going to somewhere where it's snowing. I might have overpacked. Right. Well, and you you did, you did different stuff, too. You had formal things you did, and you had casual mm-hmm. things, and then, like, dressing for the weather. So, and two weeks. I mean, that's a long time to be away. Yeah. It ended up, like, we had our really big, like, one big bag, and then we had, like, a duffel that we stuck on top of the other bag. We kind of had, like, all of our shoes. But, like... I took three pairs of boots. I only needed two. I only needed my, like, super waterproof ones and then my, like, everyday boots. I took two everyday boots just because I thought, oh, I'm going to be walking around a lot. It would be nice to go back and forth, you know, in case your feet start to get a little jiggy with one. We didn't right. walk as much as we thought we would, but uh, we did, like, 26 miles in a day and a half in Amsterdam just walking. <laughs> 26 miles. 26 miles. Well, it was two days. It was two days. But, That's and a then, lot. I know. And then we um, got, got the guts to be like, oh, shoot, there's a tram right outside of our hotel. Let's, <laughs> let's go check it That's out. That's what I would have done. <laughs> and so the last two days were great. But we got there the first night and we were so hungry after we got off the plane. Um, we just walked to this place called Food Holland, which is like a, an old train station and it's got like 20 different food vendors in it and then like communal seating in the middle 
And so we went yeah. and we got bitter ballin and some dim sum and beers and some gin and tonics and just, but we walked like three miles in the rain to get there. It wasn't supposed to rain. The rain was done. And then we started walking and then we ended up drenched by the time we got oh there. Oh my gosh. Sterling learned the importance of water proof than water resistant that, that day. Yes. That yes. was his lesson. <laughs> I told oh him. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but um, it was just a, a really good time all in all. Anyway, enough about that. Um, I wanted to talk to you about clearing your whips. I know. Yes. And yes. and I really I really want to hear from the people too in the comments. What is your 2023 knitting goals? I want to know this so from really, you and I want to know from people in the yeah. comments. What are your goals for 2023? Like what what is your short list of absolute must-have projects? And what kind of resolution-y things or whatever have you made in regards to whips? Because yes. whips are such a... Everybody's got them. They're not... <laughs> I mean, Everybody's we treat them like a dirty little secrets. secret, but they're not. You know, if it makes you happy, cast it on, you know? Who cares? Yes. But yes. there's so many things that it's like, oh, I want to finish that. But then there's this new thing. And then, you know, the, the tug of the new, the new gets me every dang time. So yeah. what, what are I your have a situations? So one thing I want to say at the front is that well, I guess this is like maybe a resolution I made or I don't know. I don't know how to characterize it, but I am somebody who tends to fail if I set like a specific numerical goal like I'm not somebody who's like a lose 10 pounds kind of goal setter like it's more about like a general principle or a theme or something that's like a little bit looser just because I I, I feel like when I box myself in in on stuff like that then it becomes work and then there's something mentally that happens where I'm like I shut down so I kind of applied that to knitting, which is my just kind of loose goal is to work on the like the 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 whips, like to just make progress on those. So one that I worked on, let me actually grab it real quick. It's right here. Um, one that I worked on in December. Um, I think, I don't know if I've showed this before, probably not, because I think it's been a minute since we recorded, but, um, mm -hmm. <laughs> it's I been a we, long we, time. We, yeah, it's been a long time. I, Sorry, everybody. We, we, we were busy. <laughs> <laughs> December is like a really like Thanksgiving to the new year. Just don't count time. on us. Yeah. Um, but this has been on my needles for like four years. It's the dotted rays speckle fade. And so I finished that in December and. I don't know. I think the thing for me is that I've got a lot of really good things on the needles. And like, for example, I'll share that I probably got at least four sweaters that are anywhere from 40% to like 85% done. So, and, and uh, more than one that basically just needs sleeves. So like that is kind of my, in my mind, that's like one of my goals for this year is like, I've got the Normandale sweater just needs like half of a collar and a sleeve and some seaming. I've got painting bricks. It needs like maybe an inch on the body and two sleeves. I've got Glenmore. It needs like it's ribbing on the bottom and sleeves. So like, I want to get a bunch of those across the finish line. But I'm also not going to be so strict with myself as to make it so I can't cast something on. Because I really, like, that's part of the joy of knitting for me is, mm -hmm. like, being able just to, like, see something online and be like, oh, my God, I got to make it. And then, like, go get the yarn and then, like, just, like, run into it. Like, I'm working, I, I know, we'll talk about it in a minute, I'm sure, but um, I'm working on a sweater from the Moon and Turtle book. And that was kind of an impulse cast on. Like, I, I had wanted to knit that for a while but um, we were in the car on the way home and like I had an idea for like the kind of yarn I wanted to use and I just kind of am like running with it and I'm really enjoying it. So that's my one resolution. Um, 
is just to kind of put a focus on whips. And then my second resolution, and again, it's kind of like loosey goosey, but I don't want everything to be a sweater. I feel like I realized that at the end of last year, it's like everything that I was making was a huge project. So I'm trying to like infuse um, some smaller things so I can have a little more success. So like hats, cowls, mittens, like things that I can um, finish up without having to. Uh, did you just say to... cowl? I did. You know, I found like a couple cowls recently that I like. So I know that's a little crazy, right? But Drew doesn't like cowls. I'm not a huge fan, but if I find the right one, I can get it, get excited about it. Like there's this one that I um, can't remember the name. Oh, it's like it's a variation of his gold star sweater, but in cowl form. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Really cool. I would like from totally Max wear. The I really li- yeah, from Max the Knitter. Okay. Yeah. So anyway, mm. um, so those are the two that I have. What about you? I I really want to finish some things up. The dog's barking. Stop. Calm yourself. What so people before don't know, we started, she got uh, yeah. To tell them. Before we started recording, I s- she's barking at nothing. Um, before we started recording, I felt like there might have been like an earthquake or something. Hold on, my laptop's like dying. It's like low battery. And I realized the thing was like, Meh. um, so now she's kind of staring off over into nowhere land and just giving little grumpy barks. But my Christmas tree, I still have my Christmas tree up because I, I missed half of December. So we're still milking it and I, you know, Christmas mug. Um, All of a sudden, like, everything on my tree started doing this. But I didn't feel anything anywhere else. And so it was really creepy. And now I'm just like, oh, well, we have a ghost. So (laughs) I'm okay with it. I'm okay with it as long as they're nice. Um, So anyway, (laughs) I do have some things I want to finish up. My first thing is the big green sweater. Um, I've made some progress on it. I'm almost done with the first sleeve. It seems to never end that sleeve because I'm making them. I'm, the whole sweater is kind of oversized, butt cropped. So it's just been a lot of knitting. Oversized things on a big body is like. <laughs> it's exhausting. <laughs> yeah. um, the other goal I have is there are two whips that I have that are, are pretty close to done. I just. I need to pull them out and work on them. And the first one is I have a hipster shawl that has one more repeat left to go on it. I haven't touched it in like two, three years and I don't know where I'm at in the pattern. So that's like one of the things like, okay, just figure your stuff out here. Right. Um, (laughs) Just take it out and figure it out. Free up a project bag. Um, And then my last little goal was to actually try to use some things in stash instead of new project oh shoot I don't have the yarn for it I need this and try to make it work but without forcing it like that's the other thing I don't like doing is forcing something you already have to work for something you want and it's not the right thing don't do that you have to be passionate about it you have to like it Mm -hmm. if you don't if you don't like it at the jump if you're if you're already like meh at the beginning it's not a good sign. <laughs> yeah. You're, you're going to just, uh, I don't want to work You're going to poop out. <laughs> but I did bring the big green sweater if you want to see it. It's gotten yes. some progress to yes. it. The body is done. Ooh, let's get, how is it inside out? I don't know what happened there. <laughs> so here's, I guess I need to like lean back. Here's the front. I love the collar on that. V-neck. Thanks. And I repeated the same little detail on the hem with a little bit of a longer ribbing. And then here is this much of this sleeve. As you can see, I did not alternate skeins long enough, but you can't see it when you're wearing it and it doesn't matter. So I'm just going to go with it. But Nobody's going to notice it. except for you. <laughs> I love it. It's cozy, but I totally stalled on it because I was just, you get in those like little, I I know you do too. We talked about this. Um, you get that little funk about a project when you're like uncertain of something 
especially like designing something like is this going to work and then you freak out about how much work you're going to put into it to find out whether it works or not and that's kind of scary and so you just kind of stop at least i do right so um putting figuring out the math for the sleeves was definitely a hold up for me and then i just sat down one night and i got my notebook out and my calculator out and i figured it out re-added everything to confirm measure twice <laughs> knit once right right um and then as soon as i started knitting the sleeve and i'm like okay we've got really good progress going cooking along I had a minor freak out once I tried it on again that I don't like the bottom hem and the bind off. So then I set it down again for a little too long. <laughs> I don't know why I do this. That's silly. Um, but I, I'm back on it. I'm going to finish the first sleeve and then I'm going to block it before I knit the second sleeve to save myself the heartache of a two sleeve failure. Yeah. But it's such a delicate balance with doing something oversized and not making it look like it doesn't fit you. Yeah. Because I don't want, you know, this part to look too small and this part to look too big or vice versa. We'll, we'll work it out. We'll work it out. It'll be fine. I still don't know if I'm going to do anything with this once I finish it, whether I'm going to write it up or not, because writing a sweater pattern seems very intimidating. I and yeah. I it's more of a I don't want somebody else to invest this much time in it and hate it. it right. It's well, definitely like something that keeps me awake at night. <laughs> well, you can see how you can live in it for a while. I think that's I, I like to your point about the pausing. I think sometimes the pausing is healthy. It's like you just need time to think about it, mm -hmm. you know, and figure out what you want to do. Do you want to rip it out? Do you want to go a different direction? Do you want to work on something else? You know. Yeah. I think that's like normal. I have some things like that too. Like I do that a lot. And sometimes I think I need to like, I, one thing I, I like a third resolution, I do need to frog. I need to go back through and like have like a, like a frogging party or whatever. Maybe we'll do that on the next podcast. But like, Ooh, yeah. there's definitely things like where I'm just like, I'm not going to finish this. Let's just like pull the band bandaid off and reclaim your bag, you know, reclaim your yarn, reclaim the reclaim bag, your needles. Reclaim yeah. You, you're probably going to be shocked at what you actually have. I mean, I already know of some that I'm for sure going to frog, like the Dustland sweater, which is such a bummer. Like, I really liked that sweater. I was so excited about knitting it. But the fabric is just, it's too loose. It's the sweat, mm. the, all, the whole sizing of it is just way off. It's going to be really big and really like, it's just going to be floppy and ugly and terrible. So, but the yarn is so good. We got to find you a new project for it to cast on immediately yeah. once you frog it to make it still a woohoo. And you don't want to put that back in stash, you know. I hate putting wound yarn in stash. My I know. I know. I. It's. I have a hard time uh, knitting with the yarn again, which sounds so. That's so bad. But I just it it, it carries like bad vibes. <laughs> so I don't know. We'll see. But, um, I think yeah. I think a whole new project where you know that it's going to work out will be just the little right, like not a not a sweater. <laughs> yeah, maybe not. Maybe so. a giant shawl. Yeah, it would. Be, this yarn would be really pretty for a giant shawl. So maybe that's what it needs to be. But um, oh, yeah. Uh, speaking of shawls, I remembered one of my other resolutions, goals for the year. I'm going to call it a goal for the year. I have two shawls that I knit. I designed in a yarn that no longer exists. It, in the process of waiting to release them, the yarn company is no more. So in order to release those, I feel like I need to re-knit them in something that is available. I mean, yeah. I, I don't know how other people feel about that, whether I just say, you know, here's what I used and here are other recommendeds, but I feel like it's important to knit it. Because I know a lot of people don't, venture outside of that they're like i need the dog is snoring now <laughs> perfect can you hear it can nobody you hear it? and then she stops <laughs> <sighs> her snores are so freaking cute um 
but so that's that's the other goal for the year is I just need to figure out what I'm going to use to re-knit those. So if anybody has any really good ideas on a very silky, drapey, beautiful sport to DK, somewhere in between there, um, and also a drapey DK, like a super wash or something with a yak blend or something like that, I need those two yarns to finish these shawls. And they're shawls I'm really excited about, which really kind of sucks. Um, I was really excited to release them and I was waiting and waiting and waiting because I was waiting on the yarn company and then poof. So I'm sad that they're no more, but um, I guess we have to move on. Life. Life, life and such. So that's my other goal. So if you have any suggestions for yarns you really love working with that fit those parameters, put them below. I, I need some inspiration because I've, I've kind of run... I, I, I like to use the same yarns over and over again, and I'm a creature of habit, and that's how I joined a cult. So uh, <laughs> I don't want to You're join another yarn one. cult. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of that's kind of a really good segue into somebody asked a question on um, our last video, and they want to know how we met and how we're friends on opposite coasts and how that works out. We joined a cult together. No, not really. <laughs> Well, we didn't join together. We were we, we found each other in the cult, and then we found each other in the cult. Um, but yeah, well, and we were associated that way. And then we also, I just really um, like dug your designs, like your early designs. I remember, in fact, I think this was before we were close friends, and I was making. I can't remember what the name of it is, but you have this uh, scarf for a man that you had knit early on, or you oh, had designed the early dashing on. Fella. Dashing, the dashing fella. Dashing fella. And I love that scarf. Yeah, and I like, I didn't really read the pattern very closely, and I like was knitting it, and I was convinced that it was wrong, and I like sent you an email, and, and, and of course, like my typical Drew way, which is basically like a mix of like midwestern nice plus i know i'm right about this tone um <laughs> <laughs> and me being from the midwest i read right through um, it <laughs> talk to trait, yeah and you very politely but in basically the same tone that i served it you were way nicer than me actually i'm you from were like, the midwest okay yeah like, you were basically we... like no it's like you need to reread it it's correct yeah and you were try totally again right. <laughs> 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 so that was like our first interaction but then I think when we really became clo close was probably around 2017 or so, I want to say. Is that right? 2016, 17, something like that. 17. We went to a knitting 17. event together. And we were just thick as thieves after that. Like, yeah. just palling around. And we couldn't make a decision knitting-wise without each other after that. So We just clicked. It just happens mm -hmm. with some people. You just, like... We have just a connection. I don't know what it is. We just, we're on the same wave, wavelength. <laughs> what a blessing. Um, yes. And it's like, I just love that. Like, uh, I just love it. It was nothing super complicated, but I, well, the thing that I think is so cool about it is that's the thing that I never expected to get out of knitting. That is such an enriching part of my life. Like both in our, own, like our, our, like work, like, like besties right so like all right we have like a deep friendship but then there's also mm -hmm. people who like i don't have as deep of a connection with or like you know i'm not talking to them every day but are still people in my life that i met both in the cult but then also just like in knitting pre and post cult <laughs> yeah so, and i, I think that's the thing that you never expect to you don't really know yeah because we talk every day like basically every day yeah like yeah. five times a week at least <laughs> yeah. Like five out of seven days, you know, like we have our, like our, you know, our days where like life is crazy. I mean, I have days where I don't talk to anybody, you know, yeah. outside of my house, which maybe that's like weird, but. But we almost every morning it's... start with like a daily check-in. Good morning. How are you? Yeah. Yeah. So find yourself a friend. But I think that's yeah. the difference too, is yeah. that like we, we both, um, I mean, I'll, I'll speak for you maybe, and then you can correct me if I'm wrong. <laughs> <laughs> um, we're both people that like, we're knitters, but we don't just knit. And I heard somebody once call it, 
I'm a knitter with a capital K. So like, it's part of who we are is we're knitters. And I think that kind of, we're both kind of on that same yeah. wavelength. That like half of life is about, what are you knitting? Did you see this yarn? It's a, it's significant. Check this pattern it's out. a significant part of my life. <laughs> <laughs> Again, yeah. not something I realized would happen when I like took that first class. I didn't realize it would like turn into like a yarn wall and like, traveling several times a year across the country to like see my people but I'm glad I'm happy for it you know mm -hmm. it's been like more than I could have ever thought and dreamt of so it's yeah it's it's wonderful we're better for it and speaking of, I, I, I think we so. get to see each other next <laughs> month I'm so excited yeah yes. so I mean I think it's okay to share this but like we have like a little yeah. I won't like share names necessarily yeah. but like go ahead we have like a little group like a small little group of us and a handful um We've been tight for many years. We all were in the cult, and it's bad to say that. I don't mean to be so negative about it. It was very positive we for a lot of reasons. We all got very let, – let's explain. We all got very, yes. very obsessed with One Yarn Company, and then our entire lives were this One Yarn Company, and, like, we ate, slept, breathed, talked this yarn, and it was all we knit with, all we – it took over – and once we were out of the cult, then we broadened our horizons to other yarns. <laughs> so that's the cult. Yeah. Yeah. We were in the cult. Yeah. But we, the, the super cool thing about all of this is like, we met up at um, shows and various things throughout the years, but then we kind of like took it independent of uh, like any one yarn company. Mm -hmm. And our first little adventure together was in, um, 2018 and we went to um like the Guerneville, california russian river area and got a sweet airbnb and hung out and cooked and knit and did like a little getaway and since then we've kind of kept that up at least once a year and not always all five of us but we've been pretty good about it in the last couple of years keeping us all together and then this year we're going in late February, um, at the same time as the Rose City Yarn Crawl in Portland, Oregon. So any Portland uh, knitters, you probably will see us um, we'll out and about. So look for us. We're really excited. We're actually renting the same house we rented last year, which is super cool. So we'll be familiar with that. And I just am so pumped. It's like I look forward to this every year. So... It's so chill. It's, I just love I it. Think... We just like unplug, we eat great food, we hang out and knit. Mm -hmm. Nobody judges us, right? Like that's the coolest mm -hmm. thing about being with like the knitters with a capital K. Like we can sit and like knit for like 10 hours straight and eat junk food and gossip and hang out and just like be together. Mm -hmm. So Exactly. Watch some trash TV. Oh. We got to catch wait. up on Smothered. We're <laughs> like we're like the bad influence of the group, the two of us. We're like mm -hmm. You know, I think the others are not as uh, inclined to watch like bad TLC shows, but we have to. I love it though. Oh my, it's such a. <laughs> we only watch it for the train wreck that it is. That's right. That's right. Yeah, but you know, we all have our own little place in the group, and we're all we just make such a good cohesive bunch and we travel together well and we get along well and we can live together well and you know and boy do we laugh i mean that's what i love it's just like laugh to laugh till your cheeks hurt kind of mm -hmm. situation so that's i need that <laughs> i'm so excited so excited and yeah, my husband's coming with us this year well he went last year but he got his own hotel room he's staying with us this year so he'll be our dinner order gopher chauffeur all things so we're just gonna he's like a really like take on portland wo wonderful um like he just he i don't want to like this is like a weird term but like he does like he likes playing the role of aaron boy like he's he's up for it <laughs> so <laughs> so that'll be good can you hear it Oh, she woke up. She's like, it got oh. too quiet. <laughs> I heard her, though. There was definitely oh. one on there. There was oh, one on she's there. so dang sweet and sleepy. 
I'm so, so pumped though. I can't believe we're doing this in conjunction with the yarn crawl too. Like, can we just like, I, I, I like, I don't think that's like fully sunk in yet, but like not only are we going to like, cause normally for the years that we've kind of disconnected it from the cult, it's not been associated with the yarn event. So like, we're going to have that like extra layer of like crazy fun. So yeah, I'm last really year when we went to Portland, we were like, <laughs> what, we were like a week or two early before the yarn crawl. And then as yeah. soon as the yarn crawl happened, we're like, oh, shoot, we screwed up. We totally yeah. screwed up. So right after the yarn crawl last year, I rebooked the same house because I was like, we're doing this and everybody's, everybody's in. And it's so exciting. Oh my gosh. Um, but we're going to go, we're going longer this time too. Cause every time it's just like, it's not enough time. So now we're like four or five nights or we something. We added like a that. day. Oh, I can't yeah. wait. I'm so excited. And we're going to go out to House of Ala Mode finally, which I haven't, I've been to Portland so many times and always mean to go out there. And then there's a snowstorm or there's Heather's closed for some reason or, you know, never works out. But this time we're going to make it. I'm so excited about that too. That's going to be so yeah. fun. And Sterling will drive us and it'll be great. <laughs> <laughs> we'll go Driver, David. we'll have lunch. Next stop, the Dalles. <laughs> <laughs> mm -hmm. yeah i told him he's sure to find some cherry pie somewhere because they're like cherries and he likes pie and i'm like you're gonna be fine you'll have something to do while we while we shop that's the other thing as an aside like portland amazing if i haven't said it six times already i'm gonna say it like a thousand more it's just like you want great food you want great yarn you want beautiful scenery cool airbnbs if you haven't it's been it's all there Get with it. Like cherry pie, we're going to have no problem finding an amazing cherry pie place. Yep. Excellent. Handcrafted by like artisanal hippies who love cherry pie and have like a little <laughs> cherry pie boutique restaurant or something. With a cherry you know? pie tattoo and a handlebar yeah, mustache. Exactly. Uh, <laughs> love Portland. I love Portland. Me too. And two of our best friends live there. So it's so yeah. exciting. So, what else you got going on? Anything, anything of note? Do you want to talk about our knit along plans for the new year? Yes. Why don't you start, and then I could talk about that, and then maybe I'll talk about my uh, my project I'm working on actively. Absolutely. So we had touched on last episode of the episode before. We had talked about doing the epic sweater knit along for 2023. Knitting a sweater that is outside of your skill set, new skills, something that scares you, something that's big and long term, um, something that's been in your queue for a really long time that you just haven't quite jumped into yet. Um, that's that's what we're doing in 2023. We'll be doing the big epic sweater knit along. That's not that's a working title. I don't know. Um, <laughs> <laughs> we'll figure out a name for it and a hashtag and all of that business. And there's I'm going to run it the entire year. So you have an entire year to knit this crazy sweater. And um, I will start with telling you what I'm doing. I'm doing the 1908 sweater from Thea Coleman, not because it scares me or anything like that. I just know that it is a long-term project for me. I knit cables kind of slowly. I don't really like cabling without a cable needle. So it takes me a long time. And I think I'm going to try doing it without a cable needle. I think I'm, that's going to be like a skill that I perfect during this. But I just know chart reading and actually sitting down and knitting something of complexity is going to take me a lot longer than any other sweater. I'm used to just like repeatable texture, easy, on the go knitting. This is going to be a, this is only in the evenings when I'm sitting here in this spot with my chart kind of knitting. So um, something like that. Um, there's really no hard and fast rules. Everybody's like a different level of knitter. If you want to knit your first sweater, that's, yeah, that's it. Knit something that gives you a little, <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. maybe that's the hashtag. Ooh. Um, uh, um, so in our next episode, we will have all of the details sorted out for that. There's going to be little prizes and things I'll make I'll make some little prizes for that um, so that's something that's upcoming so look forward to that um, and we'll get that going if you've already got something started that you started in the new year it'll qualify we're not sticklers for rules here no 
Knitting's supposed to be easy, fun. Easy going. It's supposed to be fun. I um I think mine's gonna be cables too, but I'm still I'm 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 kind of got it narrowed a little bit. So some of the ones I'm thinking about, and I'm really open to to suggestions, but just a couple off the top of my head that I've got in my like short list. One is called Snow Crocus from Midori Heroes. Um, Timberline by Jared Flood, which is this like epic cabled cardigan that I've wanted to knit for many years. Mm-hmm. Um, That's a lot Super of Moon sweater from Vera Val- Valamaki. You guys know who I'm talking about. Color Affection. Vera. Vera. Um, and then uh, some of the beautiful cabled patterns from Megan Babin at Hudson and West. So those are kind of like, I'm in that, I'm in that lane too. Like I want to do something with like a lot of texture and cables and something like really epic along those lines. Timberline's probably my like top choice right now. The main thing with that one is I've got to figure out the right yarn to use that I can get gauge on. And it's not going to be like 40 pounds pounds. because cables make things really heavy. So I got to figure that out, but. Excited. Excited. I have one other thing before we yeah. run away. Before yeah. we run away. Well, you've got some things, too. Show me your oh, overalls. Yeah. Oh, I, I, I Everybody about, needs to see this. Yes. Well, everybody. Should I, talk about my, should I talk about my whip first? Yes. Talk about your whip and then talk about okay. your overalls. Okay. Holy I'm going to take like a few minutes. I know. Oh, what are we doing? We've got like, oh. we're like 40 minutes in and we're going to forget. Okay. <laughs> so, okay. I'm going to be quick, guys. But I have some props, so bear with me. Okay, first thing. I'm knitting. The, the sun is hitting this pattern. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's gonna. <laughs> if everybody does this, to... it'll work out. Yeah. Yeah. There we fine. go. That's Perfect. better. Um, okay. Moon and turtle. This is so cool. This pattern book. If you don't own it, you should. If you're a little worried about owning it, go to your local yarn store and like check it out. A lot of really great patterns. Sidebar, what's so cool about this is it's me it's um designs by twins and the term moon and turtle is from I think Japan and it means two things that are similar in shape but could not be more different. And I thought that was really cool because that's like they have like a story because they're twins, but they're really different. Anyway, Moon and Turtle, that. check it out. So the pattern in here is called Jinsan. J or I'm sorry, G I N S A N. And it's this really cool cardigan. You have to look it up, but I am knitting it out of Lucky Tweed from Harrisville Designs. Let me talk nope. first Kelborn, about Kelbourne Woolens, right? Oh, wait, not Kelbourne Woolens. Yes, not Harrisville. Yes. Scratch that. That's Lucky a whole nother yarn we've bought recently. <laughs> yes, I like Harrisville too. <laughs> but um, okay, sorry, I'm going too fast. Um, you could, it's it fine. It's our podcast. It's not going to take as long as I it know. Needs. Mm. But you know, like, sidebar, people get, like, people peter out. Like, I like, I like I like a longer podcast, but some people are like, oh, this is an hour and 15 minutes. Blah. Anyway. It's um, not two and a half hours. You're fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, okay. So let me talk about this first. Lucky Tweed. Sorry. my I've got the sun coming in, so... This yarn, it's going to be the yarn of 2023 for me. It's mm. like right up there with Gilead. Those are big it's words. It's got really, really good specs. It's 100% merino wool, 210 yards, good price point, $20 a skein, a value for mm-hmm. 210 yards of like high quality yarn. And this color that I picked, which is called Night, is I think probably the most subdued color. Like, they have a bunch of tweeds that are, like, bright and crazy and really fun. Um, I just wanted something, like, a little bit more in the neutrals category for this particular project. The last thing I'll say um, is what I really like about this yarn is it's got that good mix of, like, rustic and soft. Um which is like my sweet, like I, that's like Mm -hmm. any yarn that's like that, that's like rustic and light, but also really soft. That's like my kryptonite. So here's a little swatch I knit out of it. You can see it's got some beautiful flex. It's very, very light. And I actually, I'm knitting um, the sweater on a nine. So I'm a little bit of a tight knitter and it's like a, a good, 
like heavy worsted, um, but it's not too dense. It's really good. It's good for your like worsted and Aran knits. So I would highly recommend it. But anyway, Jinsan, I'm making good progress. So this is my sweater so far. Um, oh. It's a cardigan. And I am probably about, I don't know, 12 rows away from the sleeve split portion. You've, so it's top down really cardigan. You've made fast progress on that. I've only you started been that like four like, days ago. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I've been knitting it. Um, I started it last week on Thursday. So I've been just, it's been about like nine days. But between, it, it, hit, it hit the right time because, as I mentioned earlier, I dove right into it. And then I had um, the week between Christmas and New Year's off. So I just literally was like, I'm going to knit all day. And I was sick <laughs> too. So I was just like, hanging out by the fire, like knitting my little heart out. It was great. <laughs> Love it. Um, yeah. So I, that's that's my deal. Should I show overalls No. Okay. A lot of me talking, guys. I'm sorry. So the last thing... It's, that's why we're here. We love I it. I guess that's the point, right? <laughs> <laughs> the other thing that I... I've been kind of like... Um, maybe it's because I had free time. I've been like hitting a lot of different crafts. Touching on a, li- a lot of different crafts lately. So I wanted to get back into ice dyeing. I had kind of... Um, not really hit a wall, but I just like... You could only dye so many sweatshirts. Like I just was mm-hmm. like at capacity. Um but I wanted to do overalls. So I did my first pair of overalls last weekend and Cassie helped me out immensely. She was like my phone to friend, like support system along with my partner, Mike. I swatched a bunch of different colors um, to kind of come up with my scheme. It turned out amazing. I went with greens and I want to show you, but I have to stand up because they're overalls. Okay. I love these so much. They're so epic. Ugh. So if we're at the yarn, the Rose City Yarn Crawl, look for Drew in his overalls. Right? I'm going to be wearing <laughs> these in Portland for sure. Mm-hmm. For sure. It was so fun um, to do these. So easy. So, and I'll just let people know, because, like, there's no secret. I got these mm-hmm. from, um, it, they're Dickies. Dickies brand, which is very ubiquitous like it's um it's kind of in that same lane as like carhartt and they're just the um white painters overalls so you guys know like painters wear those white overalls perfect for ice dyeing because they're 100 percent cotton super sturdy it took the dye great um yeah i mean i'm i've got actually another pair that I've ordered that are downstairs and later tonight I'm going to set up a pair of rainbow ones and I'm going to do a rainbow gradient. So, I'm so excited. Those are coming soon. Yeah. I'm so excited. <laughs> they turned out awesome though. I could not be happier. They are amazing and I'm They're fun. The br- the introduction of the brownish green in there sealed it. Like it, if we like, didn't have a neutral in there that yeah. would have been too much. It tones them it, just right. It's like, I think that's really where it went well. So I used four different colors on this and, um, it's the, it's like the, I don't know how to say it. It's like you're in one color family, but you've got like two neutrals and then like a pop and like a light, it's like a light, medium, dark. I don't know what I'm trying to say. Like it's the right alchemy of, of different colors, but all green. <laughs> So yeah. anyway, I love them. I Ice can't dying wait to is see them. so fun. I like, I wish I could find a way to like make that more sustainable where I could just like do that all the time. Cause like I said, it's, it's, um, it's not as Cassie can attest to, it's different than knitting and it's in a good way. It's like, it's much faster. So like you get this like immediate grat- gratification, but the, op- the kind of negative to that is like, you can very quickly like be stacked up with like way too many garments. So then you need Mm -hmm. people who actually like want to buy it from you, you know, and that's a whole nother kettle of fish, but kettle of fish. I've never (laughs) heard that. I love it. (laughs) I made everybody at my office, uh, ice dyed tote bags for Christmas. So that's a, 
that was a good outlet for me. It was yeah, selfish gifting because I got the yeah cra- craft. I was playing. Um, the part I have a problem with ice dyeing is that I I am like the poster child for ADHD, and I get stuck in these like little weird moments of the day where it's like there's a million things I could be doing. But I'm like, I always do it on my stovetop, and I have a bin, and I'm waiting for it. And I will be out there every 10 minutes just, like, watching the ice melt. Oh, like, I do that, it. too. It's I do that, too. I check on it all the time. I, I am so impatient. Like, I did real, like, I was actually, like, I have to tell, I have to, like, give myself a pat on the back this time. Because I set these up on, it was on Monday, New Year's Day Observed or whatever. Like, the last day of our break. And... What they tell you with ice dyeing, ideally, is, like, you want to leave it at least 48 hours. Now, of course, rules are meant to be broken, and a lot of times, like, I and others, like, we don't always follow those rules. But the first time I do something, I usually do, and especially, like, in the colder months where I can't put it outside because the heat kind of helps it, like, process a little bit. So I left them for, like... I think I washed them out on Thursday morning. So they went 48-plus... 12 so like 60 hours and it turned out great like i didn't end up with a ton of washout and i didn't have like a bunch of white uh spots so that was good they're perfect but but yeah i get impatient i like check it i'm like hello and then like there's like little (laughs) spots i'm like ooh, that spot could use another ice cube Ooh, that spot got missed and then you're in there like sprinkling a little more dye and putting a few ice cubes on Uh, i just i'm fuss with it that's my problem with it I'm fussy. So I have one last thing. Yeah, let's see. I released a hat pattern yesterday. Woo woo! Yeah. Um, I have this little gem of a hat. I love her. This is the. Everybody's gonna say Jennifer, because that's what it looks like, Jennifer. It is Hanaver in Dutch. Hanaver. And um, for this weekend only, through end of Sunday, so if you're watching this on Sunday, don't miss out. Um, January 8th. (laughs) January 8th, sorry, yes. Sunday, January 8th, not, you know, a year later watching this. Um, Jill from North Bay Fiber is having... um, she has an update with all bulky, like all of this delicious Cormo bulky. It's called Elemental Bulky from NorthBayFiber.com. You might know Jill Zielinski as Nidarella. Um, so for um, a purchase of the Elemental Bulky, if you purchase it on her site um, through Sunday, January 8th, 2023, um, you'll get the pattern for free. And it is just such a good, squishy, woofy, soft as butter hat. And I wore it for my entire Europe trip. Shoved it in my pockets, shoved it in my backpack, wore it 24 hours a day. And there's not, I mean, it looks like a brand new knit hat. I never even blocked it. And it's just like, this yarn, Drew, this yarn. This I'm yarn obsessed. and this pattern, this is the mashup you need in your life, especially it's yes. like the dead of winter in most places. It's January. You can knock this hat out. Like, it won't take mm-hmm. you more than a week, if that. It'll take you a couple of days. The yarn is delicious. And mm-hmm. that yarn married with Cassie's gift for, like, texture and just squish. It's, like, everything you want. And if you're a dude, you don't have to have the fuzzy pom-pom. So, like, mm-hmm. it works for everybody. Like you, it's Or you can unisex. have the fuzzy pom-pom if you want, but... You do you, boo. You do you. Mm. Whatever you want. <laughs> yeah, but I can't. I can't say enough good things about this yarn. And the only thing this makes me want is a chunky, bulky weight Cormo cardigan. And so I was Maybe talking to Jill about it yesterday. I was like, <laughs> I, I need, I need a cardigan in this yarn. Like, could you even imagine? Like, oh my god. Um. She has a color called Walnut that's part of her winter collection. And it is like a it's very... Good. <laughs> it's 
It's a brown, but it's complex. Like, it's... There, there's not, like, a warmness to it. There's almost, like, a dullness to it, like, in, like, a, a toned-down photograph of a tree. Like, the brown bark of a tree in, like, a toned-down photograph. I, I can't I can't explain it, but go check it out. Um, Walnut. She um, knit a version of the hat in, um, in Walnut, and she's posted it on Instagram. Um, but we were, we were talking about, um, different cardigan patterns and she had mentioned, uh, the wave of change cardigan from Denise Barron. Yes. Yeah. Um, that would be a really good one. And I texted her back and I was like, oh, well, what I really have in mind is the Carbeth cardigan from Kate Davies. That is something that's, it's number one in my queue and it has been for a few years and I've just never pulled the trigger on it, but maybe 2023 is, it's my time. Maybe I yeah. finally found the yarn. The yarn. This is the year. Because <laughs> I have no doubt in my mind, I mean, based on how much I abused this hat on our trip, it's going to hold up really well in a sweater. Yeah. Yeah. So get you some North Bay Fiber Elemental Bulky. Woo-hoo. PSA. <laughs> you heard it yes, here sir. first <laughs> and it only takes one skein right the hat only takes one skein one, one skein yep gotta love that it's super easy Good way to try it three row repeat and two of them are stockinette stitch you only have one row every three rows that like you have to do a, l- a little bit of purling and some other very easy beginner stuff i don't want to give it all away yeah don't give it away I'm not going to give it away. You got to buy a skinny yarn to figure it out, guys. <laughs> buy a skinny yarn, or it's available on my Ravelry store if you already have yarn. That's fine too. Um, but try the yarn, and then you get a bonus of a pattern. Um. Anyway, that's that's all I've got. Yeah. Good. Is that all you got? That's all I've got. Yeah, that's all I've got. I think for today. Well, I think I'm going to go uh, knit a little bit and then decorate Christmas. Maybe. I'm going to get those ice dyed overalls set up and I'm going to make some salmon and veggies and potatoes for dinner. So, uh, well, I mean, I'm going to get them going. We're kind of old men here, so it's about 4.15 p.m. So we've got to like, <laughs> we like to eat around 5.30. Um, so got to get things going. I should, it's 1.14. I should probably eat something today. I had a spoonful of peanut butter. <laughs> <laughs> yes, sure you should definitely eat. Ooh, Siri's oh. getting excited. Siri, Siri you're not a part I of this podcast. Quite, I didn't quite get that. <laughs> She's mouthy. All right. Well, we will bid you all adieu and get on with our stuff. Come follow us on Instagram. Subscribe. I am on Instagram as Pine Needles and Poppies, and Drew is Drew in real life. All one, all one word: Pine Needles and Poppies. Drew in real life easy as pie come follow us see what we're up to we will be back again soon now that the holidays are over you should expect a little more from us over here so we will see you all real real soon leave us comments below of what your whip down situation is any tips and tricks for getting rid of whips and what your 2023 knitting goals are and until next time bye adios